Alrighty, welcome back to 2 Thessalonians. Some really interesting stuff, a really interesting verse about people who are living during the time of the Antichrist and God's sovereign role in all of that, in allowing uh, the Antichrist to be revealed. Uh, no, no longer restraining whoever it was that was restraining him from being revealed, whether it was God himself or somebody else, and, and then God's purpose in allowing the Antichrist to be empowered by Satan with signs and wonders and, and false miracles. Why? Why? To deceive people who have already had a chance but have rejected the truth over a long period of time. And we closed in our last segment in verse number 11 an astounding verse. For this reason, for this reason, God will send upon them a deluding influence so that they will believe what is false. And what is the reason? It's for this reason. Well, it's the verse right above it. Because they did not receive the love of the truth so as to be saved. These people whom God is willing now to be deceived, he wanted previously to be saved. And that blows the entire theology of God's so-called sovereign election of the saved and the unsaved clear out of the water. Because if, if that is true, God is a complete idiot. Because we're reading about people whom he's willing to be deceived, not giving them a chance any longer, but we just forget about me saying that, but not giving them a chance to be saved whom he wanted to be saved in a previous time. You see, so... How does that fit into the doctrine of unconditional election? God changing his mind about certain people that he wants to be saved, and now he doesn't want them to be saved. It doesn't fit. And that's just one of thousands of verses that blow that theology out of the water, if you take the whole Bible. Okay? Now, for this reason, God will send upon them a deluding influence so that they will believe what is false. God wants them to believe a lie. Does it? You know, they had their chance. Now there's no more chance in order that they all may be judged. Now listen to this again now. Here's the same theme reemphasized, so it's unmistakable. Who did not believe the truth, but took pleasure in wickedness. You see, all of what God is doing is predicated on what they did previously. They rejected the truth, they didn't receive the love of the truth, they did not believe the truth, but they took pleasure in wickedness, and they did it for a long period of time, and so God says, end of mercy for you. It is no longer my will for you to be saved. It is now my will for you to be condemned, which is true of everybody who, when they die, right? Because when they die, that's their, their, their day of grace is over. Your, your destiny is sealed at death. And in these cases, in their case, their destiny is sealed prior to their death. And I'm sure there have been, you know, other examples throughout human history of people who sent away their day of grace and the same scenario played out to a lesser degree where God said, okay, I'll allow you to be deceived. I'll give you a perfect example of one that is often debated about. It's the case of Pharaoh, where the Bible says God hardened Pharaoh's heart. Does, does it really say that? Yes. God did harden Pharaoh's heart. But if you read it sequentially, chronologically, you see that initially when God began doing those judgments and miracles and so forth through Moses, it says Pharaoh hardened his heart. Pharaoh hardened his heart. And Pharaoh reached a place where God says, my goodness, you've hardened your heart. You've hardened your heart so far that I'm unwilling to go any further to try to show any mercy to you. And so now I will actively harden your heart because if you are in a situation where most people don't reach until they die because I give them until their death. But in your case, we're sealing your fate right now. And that's going to happen during this time of the Antichrist too. The whole world, God's going to seal their fate. Isn't that amazing? That is amazing. But if you can understand that, I'll tell you, you understand a lot more than a lot of, apparently, theologians understand and pastors understand. All right, so um, let's keep reading in verse number 13. But we should always give thanks to God for you, beloved a brethren beloved by the Lord. Now, shall we just take this verse and ignore everything that we read prior to this in Thessalonians, in the verses right that we've just been reading right before this, in, in all the other books of the Bible we read? I, I think not, okay? The next, this verse we're, about, we're, we're reading now is a verse out of 31,000 verses. Let's make it harmonize with the rest of the Bible. Brethren beloved by the Lord, because God has chosen you from the beginning for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit and faith in the truth. Oh, I can't tell you how many times I've heard people grab that verse and say, aha, there's the superseding truth of all truth in the Bible. God has chosen people to be saved and that's why they're saved. It's his sovereign selection. 
What? 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 Just because it says God has chosen people, it means that his choosing, his choosing them was unconditional? That there was no reason he chose them? I mean, it doesn't say that. It doesn't say he unconditionally chose them. It said he chose them. So let's talk about your choices and my choices. Do you have reasons for your choices? In fact, have you ever made a, a, a choice for no reason? I challenge you to think of a time when you've made a choice for no reason. And if you say you have, I'll tell you what it really was. It wasn't a choice at all. It was a, you tossed a coin, you rolled the dice, you pulled straws. It wasn't a choice, it was you left it to chance. You didn't make a choice. Because if you made a choice, you had a reason. And God's at least as smart as you, let me tell you. If he makes a choice, he has a reason. And if people say that God chooses people unconditionally, that is, there's nothing about them, nothing that they did, that they have nothing at all to do with this for why he chose them, he chose them unconditionally, that was not a choice on God's part, that was God rolling the dice. And people aren't really saved by grace so much as they're saved by luck, right? Because that's what luck is. They rolled the dice and it came up with your number. And that's what you're saying. That, that, that's, what, that's in essence what people who teach unconditional election are trying to persuade us of. God rolls the dice and you're, you're saved by luck, not by grace where God decides to have mercy on you because you repented. You're saved by luck. All right, I got more to say about this next time. And uh, I know I'm offending people, but I'm speaking the truth anyways. All right, God bless you. See you next time. Heavenward 7 is made possible by the financial support of viewers like you. Thank you.